is Shelley here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. So today in front of me, I have a book that I just bought and I received it just yesterday and I thought I'd come on here and share it with you guys because I haven't seen any flip throughs of it on YouTube yet. And I was quite interested in this book because it is a watercolor book. Um, and as you guys know, I use Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils in pretty much every page I use and I thought it would be nice to have Good paper as you guys know I like good paper as well um, but also I do want to learn how to do normal watercolor painting as well and I got the paints last year and I still haven't really worked with them as such so I thought it would be nice to have this in my collection I like the theme it's called Woodland Watercolor a coloring workbook um, and so I thought I'd, I'd like the theme of the book as well and before I get started, I do have to say a big thank you to Lisa from Lisa Cotter Designs here on YouTube and on Instagram. She was the one who actually made me aware of this artist and aware of this book. She messaged me at least a month ago saying, oh, do you know that um, about this artist and there's a book coming out? And I think it was going to be released um, earlier in um, Australia than it was in the UK. And um, so I was going to wait and see what everyone else um, shows about this book before I bought it. But I did go and check out the artist's Instagram. Her name is Claire Therese Gray. And I saw a few snippets of um, illustrations that she's done for the book. And I thought, OK, I'd like it. And um, Amazon UK is messing up a lot. And I know even though it says release on Amazon UK in July, I'm 100% sure I'll probably not get it till like September because... I don't know what's happening with Amazon UK. There's so many books that I've had on my wish list that have been released at least a month or two ago, which are still not available on in, on Amazon UK. And so I saw it on Blackwell's, which has now become a replacement for me for Book Depository. And it was available. So I decided to buy it. So first of all, thank you, Lisa, for making me aware of this um, artist and the book. Um all right, so I'll just get started. I thought I'd do a quick flip through so you guys can see the book in case you're interested in it. It is, um, like I said, by Claire Therese Gray, Woodland Watercolor, a coloring workbook. And it says it's printed on premium 200 GSM watercolor paper, which is brilliant. So that's the front cover and that's the back. Yeah, it's not a very big book oh okay I, I have a Hannah Carls on here I think I'll just use that um to show it to you guys um everyone has uh Marie Trolley or Hannah Carls on I'm sure you'll know their size so compared to that this is what the size of the book is so it's a smaller book which for me I don't mind because it's thick paper it's watercolor paper I don't I still need to learn how to do watercolor painting so maybe um practicing on smaller paper is probably a good idea for me so I don't mind that um, and there are 40 illustrations in this book all right I'll just get started and show you the flip through so we have all that information copyright information it was published in 2023 I think it was 31st May or beginning of June when it was uh, published or released um, so it's a very new book we have our contents page there this is beautiful isn't it the artist shows her painting also on, on Instagram, some of these illustrations, which is absolutely stunning. Um, and then we have a few introduction sort of pages. So just gives you an introduction, tells you about um, the artist's Instagram. And if you do colour in this page, she she um, would love if we could share it with on a hashtag, which is uh, hashtag colour with Claire with, without an eye. Um, and then she talks about supplies that we can use in the book. Um, obviously, I, I'm not going to read all this. Um, base, basic painting techniques, so wet on dry, wet on wet, layering, blending, colour mixing, using masking fluid. That's really good. So tips on using that to give you textures and stuff. That's really nice. Um, watercolour pencils. I'll have to read that section, see what it what else I can pick up about my Albrecht Durers. Um, and then choosing colours. And then techniques for your for using your workbook. So it gives you specific, oh that's really good. So it gives you specific way uh, tips on painting fur, feathers, skies, leaves, basically everything that will be in this book. Um, yeah, brilliant. 
brilliant and then just starting off on the book it says about the 200 gsm paper Um, and it says basically that 200 GSM paper is the heaviest grade watercolor paper available for publishing. So, um, so it's not conventional watercolor paper, so it doesn't take as uh, water as much. But for publishing, this is probably the best paper you can get. So that's really good to know. All right. And then we get into the book, guys. And as soon as I sort of saw some of the, you know, I, uh, examples of pages in this book, I loved it. And the reason I did is because it's like our coloring books. It has scenes in them and it's not just, um, you know, a workbook where they give you just a deer without any scene and you, you know, learn how to uh, paint the deer. Um, so I really liked that it is like a, a, a coloring book, basically. Um, and the illustrations are beautiful. The theme is basically something I would like. It's single-sided, thick paper, as they've said, and it does feel textured for watercolour painting. I'll try not to take too long. I just want to give you an idea of it. So there is a couple of pages where they have these little illustrations. So this one has eggs, but then there's one about, I think I'll come to it, mushrooms or things like that. The majority of it is sort of uh scenes like botanics and animals um so I, that's what i really like about it see that's beautiful isn't it so i thought it would be really nice as you guys know i love my arbor dura pencils so uh which are watercolor pencils um that's basically what i use and so i always look for nice paper to be able to use them on and i want to learn watercolor painting so um i thought this would be a beautiful book to just have in my collection um and play around in beautiful isn't it I really do like it um when I'll get started on it I'm not sure because I don't know if I want to use the Albrecht Jewels in it but if I do I think I may want to try and use them as watercolor um rather than trying to go over with the pencils dry on the entire illustration this is a really cute page I think those are otters right so a floral page. Um, so as you guys know, with my Arbor Durers, yeah, I use them activated with water, but then I tend to go over them with the pencils dry a lot in all, pretty much all my pages. And I want to try and refrain from that in this book as much as I can. Maybe give a, a little bit of texture with the pencils dry, but I think I want to try and see if I can leave my illustrations in this book you know, with the waterly effect. Snakes. That's really nice as well, like a tree branch, and then that's on the ground. It's beautiful illustrations for, for a workbook. Um, I've seen um, the artist Claire do this one, I think, with watercolour paints. Um, yeah, definitely. This is one of the ones I think I saw her do on Instagram. So you can check out her Instagram and that's really nice. See, I just, I love scenes as well for, for uh, coloring in normal coloring books. So this is one of the other pages where I mentioned that they're sort of individual elements, not really a scene, but I don't mind that. It'll learn, you can, you know, learn how to do um, metal or different textures basically. So metal or bottles or paper, wood everything with you know with watercolor paint so that would be nice to play around on that's a nice scene you're looking sort of from the top isn't it some individual flowers i don't usually crack my spine i don't want to but it will lay flat so i'm just putting a bit of pressure here oh yes it is stitch bound um, I can see the stitches here. I forgot to mention that. So it is stitch bound as well. So that's brilliant. Um, so it is going to lay flat eventually. See? I like that the names of these flowers are there. So you can try and um, look up the flowers and do them. So some of the illustrations, yeah, are not as busy as I normally colour, but... For watercolor painting for learning how to do watercolor painting i think it's beautiful that's really nice too isn't it
and again lots of coloring time in this book as a watercolor uh, book on such amazing paper to have these many illustrations 40 illustrations that's not bad uh how much did i pay for it um oh i wish i remember it, it's less than 15 pounds it was probably like 12 pounds if i'm not mistaken that's nice I just like that it's a woodland theme, especially because of the woodland creatures and, you know, the mushrooms, the rabbits, hedgehog, look at that. So this is one of those pages again that has the separate elements. Squirrels, that's so cute. I like this page. So you're sort of looking into a tree. They're all on the tree branches. Really nice. I'm not sure what birds those are, so if anyone knows, you can let me know so I can hook it up. When I'm ready to colour this page, I know what I'm colouring. It would be interesting to know the, the colours of those that bird. A couple of dogs. So basically, of course, there's going to be lots of trees and leaves and flowers to colour, but I don't mind that. I like that. Mushrooms. This is quite a simple one with just trees, but if you're learning watercolour painting, someone like me who is a beginner, that would be really nice to just play around on. And I think for the price and the fact that you get 40 pages to paint on with such amazing paper, I think that's really good, isn't it? These are pretty. These remind me of those pages in Hannah Carlson where she has, I think it is in Seasons, where she has a few elements of that season um, on them. Cute. We have a wreath here. That's nice. This is the one, so the mushroom one. So you will have to obviously press down to make it completely flat but to me it looks like it will be flat enough and especially because it's one-sided that's really good insects that's interesting that's pretty so you can play around with backgrounds and some of these illustrations just make up your own backgrounds practice with your watercolor paints if you want I do my backgrounds a lot with Arbor Dura pencils that activated with water to get a waterly effect. So I could play around with those. Um, it's really nice. I would like to find out how the, it's not smooth paper, so I'm not so sure it'll work, but um, water-based markers, how they would work. So I have the Tombow Dual brush pens and I use that a lot in my coloring, as you guys know. And I want to see if that would, you can blend directly with them. So it would be fun just practicing with them as well playing around with them, see if they, you know, you can pull them, sort of blend them with water directly on the paper or blend them with two different colours on the paper. Um, I haven't tested a really good watercolour paper with um, my Tombos. I don't think I have. Um... I know in my Japanese edition books, the water-based markers work really well. Like you can blend them directly on the paper. And then the other books, like a lot of majority of other books, even good quality books like uh, Hannah Carlson books um, you can't blend them directly on the paper so you either just put them as a direct application or you use them off a, um, a palette and use a water brush to sort of paint them on but it would be interesting to see if it works on this that's pretty a night scene that would be really nice That's a bit different with the frame. You can do some of these sort of like with the seasons as well. Like, um, so this to me looks like hollies and berries, doesn't it? So you could do like uh, winter. This actually does look like winter. Yeah, this looks like winter. Um, botanics and that could be snow settled on the on the 
uh, branch there. Yeah, I think so. That's nice. So it's not really a scene again, but it's quite pretty. This looks like different seasons to me. So like you have the, these are wintry. That's winter. That could be autumn. We have some flowers there. I'm not sure about spring and summer. I wouldn't be able to identify those, but this part here looks like wintry to me. That looks like autumnal to me. That's nice, a, sort of a wreath with the birds. You can use pencils if you want. I think it'll take a while blending the pencils on this paper. I'm not sure. Again, I would have to try it out. Is that a woodpecker? Um, so you could do, use this book however you want, but it's beautiful paper for water-based medium. Another really nice scene. I like that. And that's the end of the book, guys. So I think it's quite a pretty book. I like that there's so many scenes in them to be able to basically use as a coloring book, um, but with water-based mediums. Um, I love my Arbitrary pencils, as you guys know, so I'll have fun playing in this book. Um, and hopefully if I pick up the courage and learn how to use my watercolor paints, try that out in this book. So there we go. I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, Maybe some of you would be interested in it. I hadn't yet seen it on YouTube. And so, um, yeah, hopefully, let me know what you guys think. I think um, it'll be a beautiful book to, to play around in. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of the book, um, if it's something that you would add to your collection. Um, so I'll leave you now, and I'll be back with you guys again soon. Take care, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.